Hi, welcome to another day with Bristow Middle School Math. Today, we will be understanding how to write ratios, and our learning target is, can I write ratios? So that's what you're trying to figure out how to do today. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start by looking at digits. So this is our lesson 10-1. This is the launch. And we're going to go ahead and listen to what the launch has to say. A gift shop sells boxes of fruit online, including this box of apples and pears. Use numbers to compare the fruit in three different ways. So it says we can drag the fruit to new positions. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start by separating everything out, putting my apples on one side, mm, apples and pears on the other side. So I counted and I can see how many apples there are all together. And so I see that there are eight of them. I'm going to put them in rows of four. Get that kind of scooched a little. There we go. There's one row of four. Here is a second row of four so we can see it. And then there are four pairs, so I'm going to line them up also in a row of four. So we can compare these fruit in three different ways. We can use that rich language that we've been learning. For every two apples, there is one pair. If I have one pair, there, there are two apples. For every four apples, there are two pairs. For every four pairs, there are eight apples. So there's lots of ways. I did at least three, but I bet you could think of a few more. Going on to part one. Make sure that you're keeping up with your notes while we're doing this. We're going to listen to the intro and then watch the video. A ratio is a relationship in which for every X units of one quantity, there are Y units of another quantity. The quantities X and Y are the terms of the ratio. You use ratios to make comparisons. The ratio of the number of squares to the number of circles is 4 to 3. You can also write this ratio as 4 colon 3. So again, using our skills to write these ratios. That's our learning target. Can I write ratios? So writing four to three and comparing the squares to circle is writing a ratio. Looking at our example, write two different ratios to compare the number of headphones and the number of portable music players. So first I would count one, two, three, four, five. That's the number of headphones. I counted that first because it's asking to compare the number of headphones first and then the number of portable musical players. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have five headphones to six portable music players. When we look, we're going to watch this video. First, separate the object into two groups. Then count the object. There are five headphones. And there are six portable music players. The ratio of the number of headphones to the number of portable music players is five to six. You can also compare the objects in the reverse order. To compare the objects in the reverse order, write the ratio of the number of portable music players to the number of headphones. So the ratio of the number of portable music players to the number of headphones is six to five. Two ratios that compare the number of headphones and the number of portable music players are 5 to 6 and 6 to 5. It's 
taking a look at the next part, this is what you're going to put into your notes. You're going to put the got it in your notes. Write the ratio of the number of fish to the number of plants. So you're going to pause right here and you're going to count the number of fish to the number of plants and you're going to write that ratio. Here are your answer choices. Okay, so you should have the ratio of the number of fish to the number of plants. So the correct answer is 10 to seven. There are 10 fish for every seven plants. We can look at that solution too, okay? There are 10 fish, there are seven plants. The ratio of fish to plants is 10 to seven. Seven to 10 is not correct. Because when they ask the question, fish came first, then plants. So in the ratio, the number of fish has to come first, then plants. All right, we're going to move on to part two. Hey, our example, you toss a coin 12 times and get seven heads. Write the ratio of the number of heads to the number of tails. Think to yourself, if you tossed it 12 times and seven times got head, how many times did you get tails? So, if you took the total number of tosses, which was 12, number of heads is seven, that means the number of times you got tails was five. You got five tails. The ratio of the number of heads to the number of tails is seven to five or seven colon five. We could also write that as a fraction as seven over five. All right, let's go ahead and close that up. Let's go on to part, the next page. So this is our got it. This is what we're gonna write into our notes today. You have read 20 books from a series of 23 books. Write the ratio of the number of books you have not read to the number of books you have read. So if you read 20 out of 23, how many did you not read? Now write that as a ratio to the number of books you have read. Here's your answer choices. Pause, make sure you write down your answer. And the correct answer is three to 20. So looking at that solution again, the total number of books you had, take away the number of books you read equals the number of books that you have not read. We have to be very careful when we're reading these relationships and understand the relationships that are going on. So the number of books you have not read to the number of books you have read is three to 20. Moving on to our key concepts. So our key concept, the big idea is here is that we have three types of ratios. We can compare a part to a part, which is what we've been doing. So if we're looking at these beads, the different parts are the blue beads and the red beads. So we can compare parts to parts. We can compare part to whole. So we can just compare the parts, which may be the blue beads, to all of the beads all together. And then we can compare whole to part, which is all of the beads all together to maybe just a part, which might be the red or the blue ones. So let's look at part to part ratios. So blue to red, or red to blue. The ratio of the number of round blue beads the round, to the number of oval red beads is four to three. The ratio of the number of oval red beads to the number of round blue beads is three to four. Now we can look at part to whole. So blue to total beads or red to total beads. I'm gonna let digits read this one for me. The ratio of the number of round blue beads 
to the total number of beads is 4 to 7. The ratio of the number of oval red beads to the total number of beads is 3 to 7. And then our last one is our whole to part ratios. So looking at the all the beads to just a part of it, all the beads to another part of it. Let digits read this one too. The ratio of the total number of beads to the number of round blue beads is 7 to 4. The ratio of the total number of beads to the number of oval red beads is 7 to 3. Let's close those back up. That key concept, writing down those three different types of ratios. We're going to go to part three now. So, I'm going to let our digits read this one for us. The table shows the results from the sixth grade election for class president. You can write different ratios to describe the election result. You can kind of think yourself, what kind of ratios could I write? I could write heart to whole, heart to part, whole to part. What would be the whole here? I want you to think about this. The whole would be what? The whole would be all of the votes all together, not just the votes for Devin or the votes for Jordan or the votes for Micah. Let's listen to what Jay says. This table shows the results from the sixth grade election for class president. Way to go, Devin. And Jordan and Micah, don't give up. There's always next year. You can use the ratios of the votes to prepare for the next election. Okay, looking at the next section, we can now kind of take that information and we can do some true or false with it. The ratio of votes for Jordan to total votes is 10 to 35. So we take Jordan's, Jordan's is 10. And how many votes are there all together? 35. That is true. The ratio of votes for Devin, Devin, to Jordan, Jordan, is 10 to 20. Devin to Jordan, 10 to 20, that's false. Devin is 20 and Jordan is 10. So the correct ratio should be 20 to 10. The ratio of votes for Micah to total votes is five to 30. Well, we already know the total votes is 35. So that is false. It should be five to 35. The ratio of votes for Devin Devin to Micah is 20 to 5. Devin is 20 votes and Micah is 5, so that is true. And the ratio of total votes all together to votes for Devin is 35 to 20. That also is true. So we check. That is correct. Nice job. Okay. We can take a look at that solution and it's just showing again how we can add them all up to find the total number of votes. Okay, looking at the next one, you're gonna write down this got it. In a class, 15 students are wearing sneakers, 10 are wearing boots and five are wearing sandals. Write the ratio of the number of students wearing sneakers to total number of students. If you wanted to draw a little table, you could but you should at least write down sneakers, boots, and sandals so that you can keep track of your information. Here's your answer choices. And the correct answer is 15 to 30. So looking at that solution, we would add up to find the total number of students. There's 15 wearing sneakers. So wearing sneakers to total is 15 to 30. That should be written down in your notes. And here is our last got it in this section. Determine whether the following statement is always, sometimes, or never true. Explain your reasoning. Suppose you have a basket of fruit. Let A to B equal the ratio of the number of apples to the number of bananas. Then the ratio of the number of apples to the total number of pieces of fruit in the basket is A to A plus B. 
Okay. So think about whether that statement is always true, sometimes true, or never true. Explain your reasoning. So you're just thinking, why do you think you are right that it's either always, sometimes, or never? So pause and take a minute, write it down. All right, looking at the answer, the statement is sometimes true. If apples and bananas are the only types of fruit in the basket, then the, there is a total of A plus B pieces of fruit. The statement is true. If there's another type of fruit in the basket, such as oranges, then there will be more than A plus B pieces of fruit in the basket. And the statement is false. All right, let's put our digits away for now. Remember our learning target, can I write ratios? And in summary, make sure you fill in your summary notes. We write ratios to compare two quantities. We can write them as a fraction, A over B, using the word two, A to B, and with a colon, A colon B. We can also use phrases that include for every or for each. Until next time, keep practicing because practice makes permanence.